I have trouble dealing with people on the phone and in person. These are the two areas I'm working on. <laughs> I have nothing against the congenitally stupid. I just don't understand why they all end up in customer service. I'm in the supermarket. The other day I'm in the supermarket, right? I get out of the supermarket, I get in my car. My car won't start. So I call AAA. I said, yeah, I'm in the parking lot of the supermarket, the car won't start. The lady from AAA says, was your car working when you drove it there? <laughs> As a matter of fact, it wasn't. I had to push my car all the way here from my house. Now it's all loaded up with groceries. It's a little too heavy to push back. Maybe you can send somebody over. <laughs> We're at the mercy of these people. Everywhere you... Every morning, every morning I go to the same store. I get the same five items every morning. I get a bottle of water, a banana, a cheese danish, a cup of coffee, and a roll of Tums. <laughs> five distinctly different items of all different sizes, shapes, and consistencies. And every morning the guy behind the counter asks the same stupid question. Uh, you need a bag for that? No, I don't need a bag. In fact, don't even put the coffee in a cup. I'll just stand here with my mouth open. You can pour the hot coffee directly down my throat. Wait, I'm burst, like with my car, I'm not a car guy, right? I'm a city guy, I'm not a car guy. Something goes wrong with the car, I gotta trust the mechanic, because I don't know what he's doing. Luckily, I have a very honest mechanic, and he keeps my car running beautifully. Because every time I go in for an oil change, he sells me a new transmission. <laughs> now, now the doctors are telling, here's the latest thing. The doctor says, oh, you gotta cut down on red meat. That's the thing, you're eating too much red meat. You know what I tell him? I said, you're wrong. I said, meat eaters live longer than vegetarians. Do you know why? Because we embrace life, and then we eat it. <laughs> I'm a meat eater, I don't mess around. I go to a restaurant, I get a big juicy steak, I get a side order of pot roast, I get meat, meatballs on top of that. I tell the waiter, take it back, put it in the blender, make me a meat smoothie, I'm a meat eater. <laughs> Some vegetarians are very pushy. I saw a bumper sticker on a car. It said, meat makes me sick. Why would you put that on your car? Meat makes me sick. I'm gonna get a bumper sticker on my car that says, wheat gives me a rash. What do you think of that? <laughs> I'm gonna get a bumper sticker on my car that says, if I so much as get in the same room with a plum, I develop a urinary tract infection. What do you think of that? That's a peculiar thing, this need people have to put their innermost feelings and beliefs on little pieces of paper glued to the back of their cars. People put information about their families on bumper stickers. My son's an honor student at Midvale High. I don't care. Do I bore you with information about my family on the back of my car? Do I have a bumper sticker on the back of my car that says, my cousin Bob in Hoboken has hepatitis? No, no, I don't do that. Then I go to the optometrist recently. I wear glasses when I'm not on stage. I've been wearing glasses my whole life. Recently, I go to the optometrist, and he hits me, hits me with one of these. He says, uh, yeah, you're about, uh, you're about six months away from bifocals. <laughs> oh, you hear that, and you fully expect to hear, and you're 12 months away from being spoon-fed tapioca by a registered nurse. <laughs> so I had to go to the eyeglass store to get the multi, I'm getting, wearing the multifocal lenses now. Anybody wear these things? I can't get used to these things. I, can't, I don't know whether to look up or down. I got no depth perception. I leave the house in the morning. I feel like one of the flying will end this. <laughs> so I gotta go to the eyeglass store. I just wanna grab my glasses and get out. But you can't, you can't. Because first you gotta deal with the lady behind the counter whose sole job is to take your new glasses and put them on your head. <laughs> because this is apparently a very complicated task. You might screw it all up and poke your own eye out. <laughs> So she takes my new multifocal lens, she puts them on my head, and she looks. Then she takes them off, she makes a little adjustment. She puts them back, she looks. Then she says, these are gonna look crooked. But it's not the glasses, it's you. You have one eye higher than the other. So I said, could you take them back? Could you straighten them out? She said, no, they are straight. It's not the glasses, it's you. So now I'm starting to get a little steamed. I said, ma'am, now, you should know, when I start a sentence with the word ma'am, that's a key word. That means the volcano is about to erupt. It's like starting a sentence with, with all due respect. No one in the history of the English language has ever said anything respectful following with all due respect. 
It's always with all due respect, you should drop dead. So I said, ma'am, I've been wearing glasses all my life. I have never had this problem. She says, sir, with all due respect, I've been selling glasses all my life. I've never had this problem. I said, really? You've been selling glasses all your life? So when all the other little kids were out on the front lawn with their lemonade stands, you were out there with your optometry kiosk. <laughs> when all the little Girl Scouts were going door to door selling cookies, you were selling disposable contact lenses. So I do 12 rounds, 12 rounds with this lunatic. I storm out, I storm out, I get in the car. My wife's waiting in the car outside. I get in the car. My wife says, what happened? I said, I'll tell you what happened. That woman's insane. She said, I had one eye higher than the other. My wife says, you just noticed this? <laughs> She says, everybody on your side of the family has one eye higher than the other. <laughs> so now I'm juggling three different pairs of glasses, three different. I got my new multifocal lenses. These are for everyday use and for driving. I still wear my old prescription for distance. Like when I go to the movies, it's just easier. And now, of course, I also have my new reading glasses just for reading. So the ultimate nightmare for me would be to go see a foreign movie with subtitles at a drive-in theater. <laughs> I got three different pairs of glasses I can't find in the morning. I walk around, I get up, I walk around the house all day looking for my glasses. I gotta call my wife, I say, honey, come home, help me find my glasses. She comes home, she can't help me find the glasses because she can't find her glasses. I say, put your contact lenses in so you can see, so you can find your glasses. This is what we do all day, we look for glasses. <laughs> Young couples just starting out, it's exciting. 24 years later, you look for glasses, this is what we do. This is what we do all day. <laughs> 